This Civic Media Podcast is sponsored by UW Organ and Tissue Donation. Organ donations are desperately needed, and now is the right time to become an organ donor. Talk to your family. Get the dot. Save lives. Go to HeroicDeed.com. This is your WISS Daily News Roundup for Oshkosh Air Support, 98.3 FM and 1100 AM. For 98.3 WISS News, I'm Lisa Hale. The Wisconsin Public Service Commission voted last week to approve rate increases in 2025 and again in 2026. Preliminary estimates show the average residential WE Energies customer will pay about $17 more for electricity and between $4 and $9 more for gas per month by 2026. The average WPS customer will see rates go up roughly $12 for electricity and $4 for gas over the same time period. The Public Service Commission expects to finalize the rate increase amounts by the end of this year. The disappearance of a Watertown kayaker and the subsequent search of Green Lake has now evolved into an international investigation. Civic Media's Stuart J. Waddles reports. Authorities now suspect Ryan Borgwart faked his own death and escaped to Eastern Europe. The Green Lake County Sheriff says Borgwart's passport was checked in Canada the day after he went missing. Investigators now say they've found suspicious financial activities and communications with a woman in Uzbekistan. The sheriff's office is considering potential charges. I'm Stuart J. Waddles. Wisconsin's threat reporting tip line, Speak Up, Speak Out, or SUSO for short, has received an increase of 40% more tips since the previous school year. The Wisconsin Department of Justice released their annual report, which shows how many times threats or concerning behavior were reported to them. SUSO is a free statewide threat reporting tip line available for all Wisconsin schools. Since SUSO's inception in 2020, bullying has consistently remained the number one tip, which is also common on a national scale. The tip line allows schools to be aware of these incidents and intervene early before things escalate and potentially become violent. A local surgeon and oncologist recently traveled to Bolivia to teach other medical professionals life-saving procedures. Conrad Krieger reports. Dr. Aaron Stevens with Purveya Health works in northeastern Wisconsin, but she's very involved with a program to help doctors and surgeons in Bolivia. I go with an organization called Solidarity Bridge, and they have a boots-on-the-ground organization in Bolivia, and our goal is to train the surgeons there to do minimally invasive surgery. They don't have that 6, 8, 12 weeks to heal from a big incision, so we're able to teach the doctors there to do the surgery. Stevens said that the people in Bolivia need access to safe and timely surgical care. A 20-year-old Tachita man faces seven counts of possession of virtual or AI-created child pornography. Milo Schneider is accused of accessing thousands of JPEG and GIF files of anime or artistic renderings of child sexual abuse. The criminal complaint says some images were hard to distinguish if they were AI-generated or real unidentified victims. Earlier this year, Wisconsin lawmakers passed a bill that added AI-generated content to child pornography possession laws. Bond was set at $100,000. Fermin Lopez Mendoza, who is living in the U.S. illegally, is convicted of trying to kill his wife in Fond du Lac in March. He fled the area but was found and arrested in Ozaki County. Lopez Mendoza pleaded no contest to attempted first-degree intentional homicide with a dangerous weapon and domestic abuse. He faces a maximum penalty of 65 years in prison. He'll be sentenced on March 18th. A Brown County resident is the victim of debit card skimming. The Brown County Sheriff's Office is seeking help identifying a suspect who used information from the debit card to make fraudulent purchases. Surveillance images from Ernie's Liquor in Madison, one of the locations where the information was used, are available on our website. If you can identify the suspect, please call Brown County Deputy Nicholas Stuber. I'm Lisa Hale, 98.3 WISS News. For news anytime, log on to WISS.FM. It's Packers and Bears week. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Packers held practice getting ready for the Bears in Chicago Sunday. Even though the Packers have beat the Bears 10 times in a row, I asked Jordan Love if there's still a rivalry. Definitely. No, we, we know the history of the, the game, and it's uh, definitely, you know, I think it's special to be a part of it. A rivalry that's been going on, uh, the oldest rivalry in football. In Chicago, Bears head coach Matt Eberflus fired his offensive coordinator. In the past 48 hours, working through some things and obviously released uh, Shane Waldron. What I'm looking for the offense. 
is, is creativity, working the guys into uh, open positions on the field. But that takes creativity, but it takes everybody. Pass coordinator Thomas Brown promoted to offensive play caller. NBA, the Bucks with a 127-120 win in overtime against the Pistons. Damian Lillard out with a concussion. Giannis with 59 points. Not only did Giannis have to score, he, he actually had to be a point guard as well. That's Doc Rivers with Sports on Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. When it comes to films opening wide this weekend, it's a bit quiet, sort of like the calm before the storm. All eyes are on next week's openers, which will showcase Barbenheimer 2.0 or Click It, which is Wicked and Gladiator 2. But there is one film opening wide this week, and it follows a new trend of badass Santa movies. Red One stars Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Chris Evans, J.K. Simmons, and the awesome Bonnie Hunt. Johnson plays the head of security at the North Pole and teams up with bounty hunter Evans to find Santa Claus, who has been kidnapped. It's usually an inside job. The first suspect, would be Mrs. Claus. Red One is getting less than 40% on Rotten Tomatoes, but don't let that stop you. It looks like pure holiday fun, and at PG-13, it's fun for the whole family. The Bruce Willis film, The Fifth Element, is getting a re-release this weekend, but in a limited capacity. The film is from 1997 and also stars Ian Holm, Gary Oldman, and Chris Tucker. If you feel like staying home, new movies to stream include Megalopolis, Saturday Night, or Michael Keaton's Goodrich. Let's go to the movies. Actor Glenn Powell is no Ethan Hunt, according to actor Glenn Powell. The Top Gun and Twisters actor denied rumors that he will be the the next Ethan Hunt in the Mission Impossible series. Rumor had it that Tom Cruise was the one who wanted Powell to be his successor. Powell told Pat McAfee of The Pat McAfee Show there is no way he wants the role and would certainly never do his own stunts like Cruise does. Cruise created the role of Hangman in Top Gun Maverick for Powell after Powell lost out on playing Goose's son to Miles Teller. Seems like he's doing okay since then. Powell is currently filming The Running Man, a remake of the Arnold Schwarzenegger film from the 1990s. For those of you who are film noir buffs, I don't think I have to tell you this is noir vember. If you're looking for a good old black and white film to watch, check out In a Lonely Place with Humphrey Bogart. Bogart plays a cocky Hollywood writer suspected of killing a young starlet. The story has lots of twists and turns and has excellent acting. It's got all the elements you want in a good film noir and an ending you don't see coming. Happy November. There's not much left for Denzel Washington to achieve when it comes to his career. That is probably why he's mentioned retiring soon. The actor says he will star in the third Black Panther film. After that, he says he will do Othello and then King Lear and then hang it up. There is a lot of potential there to exit the business with a third Oscar for acting. Washington won Best Actor for Training Day and a Best Supporting Actor statue for Glory. Seems like he's really getting the hang of this acting thing. Fasten your seatbelts. There is a new Sexiest Man Alive for 2024, and his name is John Krasinski. The always humble Jim from The Office and star of A Quiet Place says when he got the news, he thought he was being punked. His wife, Emily Blunt, said if he won, she would wallpaper the house with magazine covers. Sounds like they have a busy weekend. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Wamba, weeknights from 6 to 8 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Showers will gradually end this morning, but it is going to stay cloudy here most of the day today. Our high right around 50 with wind out of the north at 5 to 15. Tonight, 40. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, 53. Saturday, Mostly cloudy, 54. Showers, 57 on Sunday. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Outside now, it's 46. That's your WISS Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WISS.FM. The national news cycle never stops, but it can be hard to find news about your local community. Civic Media is dedicated to providing quality local and state news coverage across Wisconsin. With the Civic Media app, you can get notifications about local stories that matter to you and your community. Find the free Civic Media app in your phone's app store and choose notifications from the menu to tell us what kind of news you want to hear about. 